In this short video, I'm going to explain how to use JSTOR as a student at Bishop Kinney High School. The first time you log in, you'll need to get a Bishop Kinney username and password from your teacher. But once you've logged in, you can create your own account using your Bishop Kinney Gmail address, and you can set your own password. Every time that you log into JSTOR after that first time, you can simply use that Bishop Kinney Gmail and your own password to log in. You always want to make sure when you do log in that you see up top in the banner the wording access provided by Bishop Kinney High School. If you do not see that there, you haven't successfully logged in and you're not going to actually be able to view the full content uh, once you begin your search. So what I'm going to show you here in short is how to efficiently search through the resources that are here contained in JSTOR. So what we're going to do is in the search field, we're going to type in the name of a story. And let's imagine that we're writing on this story for English class. So I'm writing The Minister's Black Veil, which is a very famous short story by Nathaniel Hawthorne that's typically taught in English 3 here at Bishop Kinney. You can see that I have an overwhelming number of results, 5,949. So the main thing I'm going to show you in this video is how to reduce the number of results that you have and have a much more bearable workload since you're limited in terms of how much time you have. So right out of the gate, the first thing to point out on the left side under academic content, you can see that we have a couple of toggles that we can enable. By default, we're seeing all three of these categories. We're seeing journal articles, we're seeing book chapters, and we're seeing research reports. It's my recommendation that you mostly limit your searching to journals. The only reason why I suggest that a book chapter is probably not most useful to you is often you will not completely understand what's going on in that chapter because it's part of a larger text, okay? Second, we can scroll down here and you see you have the option to narrow down your publication dates. I typically tell students to go with a relatively recent range, which is even more important in scientific disciplines. Uh, but here you see I'm going to go with 1980 to 2020. If you're not finding anything in the time range that you've specified, you can, of course, expand that and see if you find anything that's a little bit older. However, I should point out that many academic articles that are written prior to 1960 are going to be written in language that's more difficult and less familiar, and you're also going to have references that aren't necessarily something that you've seen before, okay? So it's always better to begin with something a little bit more restrictive and recent. Make sure you hit apply after you enter those dates. So already we can see after narrowing down to journals and 1980 to 2020, we've reduced our number of results to 2031. Next, you are able to use these filters under subject to look for certain works of scholarship in specific academic disciplines. So as I said, the Minister's Black Veil is something that we teach here at Bishop Kinney in English 3, so I'm going to go ahead and click Language and Literature. That does not mean that even though I'm writing for an English class, I will not find other disciplines that would be appropriate to check. So what I recommend is if you're not finding what you need, you can see that we're going to go down to 686 here. Go ahead and take a look at a few of these other categories and find if something suits you. For example, the Minister's Black Veil does deal with religious themes. So you see I have religion, which I could select, and that would add an additional 178 papers to what I'm seeing in my results. Okay, uh, so next. Notice that I've only typed in the title of the story here. I could further reduce the results that I get by adding the name of the author, Nathaniel Hawthorne. I could also add another word here to more drastically reduce the number of results that I'm getting. So let's imagine that my teacher wants me to write a paper on ambiguity in the minister's black veil. It's one of the things for which the story is very famous. I'm going to type the word ambiguity right there in my search, and let's see what we get. So you can see that I've actually gone up to 988. I can explain why that happened. Take a look on the left side. You see that all of our settings have reset. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to check journals, 508. We're going to go 1980 to 2020. We're going to hit apply. Already 375. And then we're going to go down and select language and literature, which brings us to 171. Obviously, this is still too many papers for you to really go through 
um, given the, the time limitations that you have as a high school student. So here's my next bit of advice for you. Uh, first, notice that you can change the way that you're sorting, okay? So the relevance of the paper, okay, which is of course just going off of what you typed in in the search bar, and then you can sort them chronologically, okay? Either that which is newest or that which is oldest. Second, on the right side, you can see here that you have some nice shortcuts. First of all, you can download a PDF of the paper. You can save it, which essentially bookmarks the paper under your account. And you're able to make separate workspaces, which are essentially folders. So let's say that you're writing a Minister's Black Veil paper. You save a bunch of materials in a folder called the Minister's Black Veil. And then when you move later in the semester to a different novel or short story, you can make a workspace for that particular text. Lastly, you have something that you're really going to like, the Cite This Item button. So you see here that you have a full readout that gives you MLA, APA, and Chicago style citations for your Works Cited page. You can copy this and paste it directly to your Works Cited page. Very easy, and it's more trustworthy than using something like EasyBib or EasyCite. I will say, if you see all caps in the entry, other than JSTOR, make sure that you fix it and put it back in non-all caps, okay? Sometimes that happens just based on what the academic journals send to JSTOR, okay? Second, never put something in your work cited that you don't actually use in the paper, whether you directly cite it word for word, as in a quote, or you decide to paraphrase it, which of course still requires a, a parenthetical citation. So I'm frozen here. Let's see. We'll just refresh. Okay, so we see all of my restrictions are still in place, so we're good there. All right, uh, second, let's say you're going through here and you want to find some way to differentiate between these different resources. One of the best things to do is take a look at the title of the journal, Okay, which will give you some sort of indication of roughly uh, the topic or, or purpose that the author has in that particular article. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, notice that you have the page count. So this first one we see is pages 169 through 195, which is a relatively uh, lengthy academic article. The second one you can see is 18 pages. This third one, seven pages. So one thing that I recommend to my students, uh, when you find a lot of papers that are in here, Something that might catch your eye is finding something that's of reasonable length. You probably don't want to read a 30 or 40 page article, um, which is, in this case, much longer than the short story itself. Okay? Um, so that should cover it. You're free to contact me if you have any questions. My email is digeorgiop at bishopkinney.net. Thanks.